Hello and welcome to episode 4 of Safety for Cruisers. Today we are going to be covering satellite communication. Basically we're going to break down the uh, two different categories. One we have the simple search and rescue and uh, what I'll call the augmented. Uh, so we're going to start simple and uh, move up from there. One of the single most important things that you can do uh, to increase your chances of survival if your boat is to go down at sea is to have an EPIRB on board. EPIRB stands for Emergency Position Indicating Radio Beacon, kind of a mouthful, uh, but there you have it. And essentially what this does is this plays off of a network of satellites that's maintained by governments around the world and the satellites are used for search and rescue. They actually uh, work, for, uh, work for weather data, so they're multifaceted, which means that they uh, are paid attention to very heavily, uh, whereas these uh, other ones here are private. And so this, uh, this device and uh, also the smaller cousin, the PLB, are going to have essentially 100% coverage, 99.9% you know, .9 of the globe anywhere on land at sea if you activate one of these you're going to get out to a satellite and you're going to get found this is a uh, new generation this is the acr global fix v4 uh, i chose this one because it has a removable battery and uh, it fits nicely uh, where i needed to be mounted there's a lot of different companies that do things but essentially you want to make sure that you're buying a new one so that you have a uh, dual frequency EPIRB. So this operates off of a 406, 406 megahertz and also 121.5 as a homing signal. So the older EPIRBs were only on 121.5 and they had a pretty miserable uh, success rate in terms of getting people located in a timely fashion and it was a product of the frequency of the signal and uh, the availability of satellites all different kinds of things so they're phasing out the uh, old 121.5s in fact you can't really buy them anymore unless you really go out and uh, look so you want to get a nice new dual frequency 406 and 121.5 Essentially, the way these work is uh, they have internal GPS receivers, and so uh, if you were to slide this uh, hatch open, breaking the, uh, the safety seal and uh, depress that button, it's going to turn on, it's going to find your location, and it's going to transmit that up on a 406 megahertz frequency up to the satellite. That is then going to get uh, sent out to whatever area this beacon is registered to. So I'm registered with uh, with NOAA, uh, which is the US uh, National Weather Agency. And so that means that this EPIRB is going to ping out to the Air Force Rescue Command Center. They're then going to say, okay, he's off the coast of Mexico. He's going to send that out to Marine Rescate and uh, they're going to come get me. Uh, they all, all the uh, agencies that deal with these all interface uh, internationally and work very closely together on search and rescue missions. So uh, no matter where you are in the world, wherever that signal goes, whether it's across the world or right next door, they're going to interface fine. And uh, the great thing about these is that once you, uh, once that signal goes out, it not only pings and says, hey, somebody's in distress, but you actually have to register these. There's no subscription, there's no annual fee, there's nothing like that. You register it with whatever agency it's with, like I said, mine's NOAA, and uh, you put your boat name, your name, your emergency contact, uh, you can put whatever information is available on that site that information is going to get pinged up. So they're going to see, if I were to hit this now, they're going to see that an EPIRB registered to Eitan Zur, uh, who owns the vessel SV Sierra Wind, registration number 991925, here is emergency contact, yada, 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 has an emergency in this location. So they get a whole data dump uh, that they can then use to figure out, uh, you know, who you are. Uh, you can your vessel type, so they know if they're looking for a 36 foot sailboat. If they show up there and they find a 50 foot motor yacht, either I brought this on my 50 foot motor yacht that I decided not to change the registration, or they found the wrong boat. So it's a lot of useful information. You need to make sure you keep this stuff updated. So if you change your address, if you change an emergency contact, if you get a new boat. Uh, whatever it is, you need to update your information. It's free, it's easy, just do it. But that's a huge problem for the Coast Guard and other agencies, because people are lazy, they sell the boat, they sell the EPIRB, then the EPIRB goes off and they call the wrong emergency contact because nobody changed it. So make sure you keep your stuff updated. Um, 
little bit of a tangent there. So 406 uh, signal goes up, transfers over to uh, the agency responsible. They send out a search, uh, a search and rescue asset. Uh, that asset is going to use the information provided by the 406 signal. And then once they get to the general area, they're going to use uh, some variety of RDF, uh, radio uh, direction finding equipment to hone in on a 121.5 megahertz uh, signal that's emanating from this. It's a tracking signal that allows them to get exactly where you are once they get on site. The 406 is accurate enough that they could do it alone on that, but um, a lot of EPIRBs are dual frequency. There are some that are only one or the other, but there are a lot of dual. So uh, the 125 is great. Uh, we'll put a little clip uh, with the sound that they'll actually be honing in on and listening to uh, right here. And uh, you'll actually hear that, which is kind of cool. If you were to tone in or tune in with a uh, handheld VHF uh, or a handheld uh, aircraft radio that we have, while one of these is going off, you'd actually hear the 121.5 signal going out. So that is EPIRB in a nutshell. This is a PLB. Lots of different shapes, sizes, colors. All of them exactly the same, just smaller. That has about 48 hours of battery transmission life. This has about 24. Uh, some of them have screens, some of them don't, uh, but it's same technology, same exact frequencies, just a smaller package. One thing uh, to note about these guys is they all have test functions. Make sure you read the manufacturer recommendation on when and how often to test them. Uh, never, ever, ever activate the emergency function as a test. Now, moving on to the uh, more complicated but slightly uh, less effective brother or, and or sister, uh, we have our uh, we have our kind of privatized search and rescue aids here. So this is the Garmin InReach. They have an InReach Mini. Uh, this is really cool because uh, this allows you to text. You can set up tracking websites, um, and it also has a SOS function. The thing about this is that it's a privatized network. Garmin is a private for com for profit company, so they only have contracts with certain satellites. So the coverage for both of these devices, uh, we'll get to the Iridium in a minute, is going to be decreased. Uh, they boast different coverage levels and availability, and I'm sure it'll be getting better every year as they contract with more, but as a uh, as just a bomb-proof fail-safe method, the EPIRBs and the PLBs are going to surpass uh, this, uh, this little guy here. The nice thing about this is that not only can you send a uh, a distress function and it'll also have all of your info and everything but you can text so whether it's through an app that you have networked to your smartphone you can send and receive text uh, you can get some weather data um, it has mapping functions so uh, it's got uh, compasses it's, you can store routes uh, you can do all kinds of fun stuff on this so this is a much more versatile one but with that it's a little bit less like I said reliable and it comes with a fee. So depending on what you want to pay for, you can pay by the message, by the um, amount of data you get, depending on the plan. So uh, you're going to pay a monthly fee for this, uh, as well as for the device itself. Um, but it does come with a lot of cool uh, little tricks. So uh, this is the Garmin InReach. Um, I hadn't used one until uh, when cruising. This uh, doesn't belong to me, this is Amanda's. Uh, but had a lot of fun using it, uh, getting the messages is great. Um, what I chose instead of the InReach is the Iridium Go. So this little guy is a, a lot less user friendly obviously than that. This is essentially designed only to be used with an app. Um, this is also a privatized network, um, so it has an SOS function, but same uh, problems as you have with the Garmin. Uh, but what I love about this is this allows me to not only email, text, uh, I can call, which you cannot do on the inReach, which is great, uh, but it allows me to download weather through Predict Wind Offshore, which is uh, one of the leading uh, companies that handles offshore weather routing. So when I'm out of reach with my phone, I turn my Iridium Go on, and now I can download weather, and I can passage plan, and I can see what's coming at me weather-wise uh, anywhere in the world. So I really love this. This is a fantastic, uh, fantastic device. Like I said, the same kind of weaknesses, uh, the, uh, the coverage and also the cost. So out of all these devices, this is the most expensive and also the subscription is the most expensive because you're downloading satellite data and that uh, comes with a cost. Uh, so 
Again, same kind of uh, notes with these is they all have self-test functions, so you want to make sure you're following the manufacturer recommendation on that. Uh, they all um, they all have different procedures and how you test them, when you can test them, when you can test them. So make sure you read up on these. Uh, you can check out. They all have different uh, you know kind of relatives in terms of the family of devices they have. The InReach Mini. They have the uh, Iridium. Uh, actually, it's a, a regular satellite phone that can also do a lot of the same things. So check out your different options. Uh, if you have to pick one, raw search and rescue is going to be your EPIRB, your PLB. Once you have that, which I think everyone should have, um, everyone, you know, for ocean races and for a lot of offshore sailing, you're actually required to have every crew member with a PLB on their, uh, on their vest and then also an EPIRB for the ship. So once you have that and you've got the bare minimum safety covered, then you can start looking into some more luxuries like downloading weather and texting, email, and satellite calling. Stay tuned, uh, coming up next is going to be uh, VHF and SSB radio communications.